Well, hey there, Dev Central community. It's uh, it's John. It's that time. It's 1230 Pacific on Thursday. That means we are streaming to you live here on Dev Central Connects. And this is the Security Sidebar Show. And I am excited to be here. And I'm excited that all of you are here. And we've already had a couple of people. I'm going to just give a little shout out right now. I'm going to say hello to Mr. Josh. You made it. And we're glad you did, my friend. Josh is here as well as Jason, my buddy Jason, man, my sidekick. We'll be we'll be together next week uh, on the Dev Central Connects live show next Thursday because we're here every Thursday at 1230, right? Uh, Pasilva has welcomed those who have shown up and welcome to you as well, my friend Pete Silva. Awesome, man. Leslie, looking forward to the show. I tell you what, I am too. You are not the only one. And then, uh, and then Mamlish, Mamlish, you say hello, I say hello. Thanks for being here, my friend. So uh, it's, it's great to have everybody. Here's uh, here's Ni. Uh, I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Ni Hamed. Ni Hamed. Nice to be here. It's, I'm glad you're here, Ni. It's awesome, man. Well, hey, I. Uh, you know, there, there are those moments. There are those times in your life where you just say, "Hey." I am excited to experience what I'm about to experience, right? I am just really fired up. And today is one of those days. So we have a special, special treat uh, you know, for all of you today. I am joined by a man who has done many things, many things. Uh, he is a security expert, unlike any the world has ever seen. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, right? Um, but it doesn't stop there. This man's experience and uh, and you know uh, expertise runs vast and wide, and you're going to be absolutely uh, you know amazed and encouraged by this today. So with that, let me welcome my good friend uh, Rob Roge from Shape Security, now part of F5, by the way. Um, and we're going to talk about a bunch of security stuff. So let me bring him on, and here we go. My Thank friend Rob, much. Rob Rose, Rob Rose, there you are, man. Good afternoon. How's it, is it going? Great. It is great to have you here. I am excited. Um, so maybe to start things off, let me let me just let everybody know what you do around here, as if uh, as if you needed an introduction. You are the senior global solutions architect for security, coming from Shape. Um, so. With a title like that, I almost have to ask, what do you not know about security, right? I mean, you've done it all, right? That's the scary part is knowing, like, knowing what you don't know. That's that's the hard part. But like, it's it's been an interesting ride at Shape. And just uh, the global coverage is pretty rough as well because you see all kinds of attacks and including state actors, which is probably the, uh, the scariest thing I've ever seen. Um, since joining Shape, I've actually gotten a lot more paranoid uh, by seeing uh, state actor attacks. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, been a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy world we live in and you've seen it all, man. So, I mean, you've got the, you've got the background to talk about it. Yeah, of course. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, Hey, I appreciate you being here. One of the things I wanted to just, uh, to just highlight, first of all, before we get into some security stuff, this is the security sidebar, but before we do that, I got to let everybody out there know your prowess, your technical sure. expertise when it comes to brisket um, you know, smoking, smoking the brisket. And in fact, you even have a little side deal. So for those that need a brisket in the San Francisco Bay Area, it's called um, what? It, brisket, it's called Prime. brisket Prime. Am I right? Yeah, so that's correct. Tell us about the brisket story really quick. So I'm from the Midwest and barbecue in California is not the best. And so <laughs> I started off with like a really inexpensive smoker, but then it went to kind of hobby and what happened was when i joined shape i did some stress cooking and i mm. brought a brisket into work uh and the co-founder one of the co-founders summit uh basically said how do we get you to make more of this brisket and so shape bought me a really big smoker uh and so i've been it's escalated since then so i now have three smokers a pig roasting box and a grill at my house my tiny house in the bay area that is awesome. That is awesome. And I guess in the in the words of Ron Burgundy, that escalated quickly, Rob. That escalated yeah. quickly. <laughs> uh, so that's awesome, man. So now not only do you do you smoke the brisket, which 
is amazing in and of itself. I mean, my mouth is kind of starting to water. Next time I'm there, I'm going to be like, Rob, you know, are you home right now? Or even if you're not home, is your brisket home? You know yeah. what I mean? So and fibers get it, whatever they want. I, that's, a, oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Immediately, I need a trip to the Bay Area. Um, so, uh, so yeah, but not only do you smoke these briskets, but you have implemented some, literally some automation into this. Cause I, if I remember right, you found that like getting a consistent product, you know, at the end of each smoked brisket was a challenge. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to realize like some consistency. Is that right? Maybe tell us about that for of a second. Course. So brisket is the, the most challenging barbecue to make because what happens wow. is it's barbecue in general is you take a not so good cut of meat and you make it delicious by slow cooking it. Uh -huh. um, the challenge with brisket is that um, I have an engineering background. I'm a biomedical engineer and a CS major, Love it. Uh, but it's incredibly complex. What happens is the meat is not consistent. So you have different fat content, different water content. And mm -hmm. so even like cooking to a certain temperature doesn't get you the right kind of brisket. It's all by feel. So I tried experiments for like time, wrapping things and uh you just have to kind of it's it's a, the horrible thing is it's a feel thing but you can try automating as much as possible right so instead of using a stick burner i use a pellet grill because the temperature is more consistent i have a remote control thermometer i have remote like i have an app for everything basically i've tried a lot of different technologies to try to get the, a consistent product um that yeah. that said most of these iot devices are very insecure and so they're probably <laughs> compromised because they're using standard Linux and they're probably attacking customers or prospects with bots. Right. right. And that's what, like, I know this, everything is connected to my guest network. So you have no access yes. to the rest of my network. Of and course. Possibly, you know, creating more customers as well <laughs> by automating my, my barbecue technology. You're, you're adding to the shape, you know, share. Uh, yeah, that's the market share. Uh, because yeah, you're probably part of some massive botnet somewhere. I mean, but I'm hey. watching it. But I, again, it's they're really yeah. open. The thing is, a lot of these IoT devices are just like just connect to the internet, and it's just it's so easy to compromise. And it just you just go look on the dark web. And they're like step by step instructions on how to do things. It's horrible. Yeah, it's like this is how you hack into Rob's, you know, <laughs> IoT whatever pellet temperature thing. Yep. So uh so that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, one little quick thing, I got to pop this up here. My good friend Leif Zimmerman, he's like, "Hey, I guess after all this discussion, his chicken sandwich just tastes <laughs> mad." Now, Leif, here's what I'm going to say, my friend. Head down south a little bit, go grab some brisket from Rob, you know? That would be amazing. So anyway, although Rob, if I remember right, you said that typically you just go straight meat. Like when you eat it, you I mean, you can put it on a sandwich, you know, yeah. brisket sand, but you normally just go straight away because it's become so amazing. You just eat it straight. And right? good brisket should not require sauce. That's the other thing you want to remember. Like you should taste the meat. Um, if you're putting stuff on there, that means it's not good brisket. <laughs> if you've added, okay, if you've added the sauce, I know there's some steak connoisseurs out there as well. If you've added the sauce, then you're right. It means that the steak is not where it needs to be, right? Yeah. So uh, good to go. Yeah, Leaf has come back and he said, I'm on it. So expect a visitor maybe pretty soon, Rob. Of course. Yeah. I mean, Brisket yeah. Prime is, uh, I have an Instagram, Facebook, all that social media stuff too. So feel free to follow if you. Brisket Prime, be a follower, man. Yeah. That's, I, I uh, that's good stuff. every weekend and it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we may have to, we may, we'll may we put a link in the little uh, description down here. Go follow Rob's Brisket Prime. Brisket Prime. That's awesome. Here's Jason again. All the Rudy's gas station barbecues in Texas have the best consistent brisket. I would agree. Ever. It is quite excellent. Um, yeah. Again, in California, though, it's not good. <laughs> it's <laughs> not right. Not good. Uh, That's awesome. You know, Texas, Texas is the it's the the homeland for brisket. That yeah. said, I have impressed Texans with my brisket. You have fact, impressed. Well, I, I tell is, you, yeah, VP yeah. Sock loves it. I I got him to go from his stick burner that his grandfather built in his backyard to a pellet smoker because of how, how consistent it was. Again, it's, that's awesome. It's that's good. awesome. And you know, that's fascinating to know. Cause some people say, Hey, I just need to get the temperature right. I just need to like slow cook it or whatever, yeah. but you got to do, it's the feel of it. Like you said, it's not, it's, it's the, the, you know, the, the water consistency or the whatever, you know, the moisture. Yeah, one could bark as well. Right. And so that's why like some people wrap, some people don't, there's a lot of like fat side down, fat side up. There's a lot of arguments, but again, like if you take a scientific approach to it, um, it's still really challenging. And if you, you want to learn how to smoke, uh, amazingribs.com is like the America's test kitchen of barbecue. And so you can learn that way and then just learn further on after that as well. So I, uh, I think that this is a, this is a great, <laughs> this is a great takeaway. You know, who said we didn't learn all kinds of practical things here on the security sidebar, you know, 
And for those that may be tempted to hack into Rob's, you know, IOT devices, don't do it, you know, whatever. Just uh, just let him smoke his brisket. (laughs) Come on, man. You know, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Leslie actually saying, Hey, I miss, makes me miss living in Texas. She, uh, she was down in Texas for a while. So yeah, good stuff. Well, that is awesome, man. So yeah. So brisket connoisseur, you know, the, uh, the master of the meats, Mr. Rob. Awesome, man. But also so much more than that, the global security uh, architect at Shape. So, hey, one of, the, one of the things that I found fascinating, we were kind of chit-chatting a little bit before this, is that from an organizational perspective, these companies, you know, all everyone says, hey, security is important. You know, everybody agrees. If you if you gave them a little test and said, is security important? Yes or no? Everyone would be like, okay, yes. But, but you found... The uh, that that different parts of the organization, you know, marketing or sales or HR or whatever, tend to look at security from different lenses. And so it kind of creates this interesting situation, maybe even competing, you know, interest. And so I'd I'd love to get your thoughts around that whole thing and, and maybe what we do with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's actually interesting. Right. So everyone wants good security. Um, and, you know, Shape focused on bots and automation. So bots doing credential stuffing on login, things like that. Um, what we found is uh, that if you stop bots at login, right? So they're basically going through and trying to attack credential stuff, take over accounts, right? If you stop them at that point, there's a lot of downstream effect, right? So for example, um, you block these bots by actually getting in, fraud goes down, right? And so what we've seen is... Uh, Usually when we go in line after all existing defenses, we see anywhere from 40 to 90% of the traffic is still automated, which is extremely high, right? Wow. And so what happens is that once you get rid of the fraud, the fraud team goes, it's hard for them to justify their budget sometimes. And so this is a conflict wow. of interest where they're they're like, just trying to like, we went into in front of a large retailer, we ended up preventing $50 million of annual gift card fraud. Right. And wow. what happened was the fraud team noticed this huge drop in fraud. And then the next year they had trouble kind of justifying their budget. And actually they tried taking over uh, the shape management as well. Uh, so it, it's a political battle. Right. And the other thing is wow. you see if you're a media company and you you're trying to get bot, rid of bots, but bots are doing ad clicks. That's revenue. Right. So if wow. your KPIs are ads, you may not want to see these bots. Right. Because it's generating ad revenue. Or if your marketing is driving traffic to the site and that tra- site is, uh, that traffic is not real, yeah. that could be bad, right? But if you think of it other ways of spinning things, right? So if you think of conversion rates for marketing, right? They're rewarded on conversion rates. Your conversion rate will go up because the bots don't usually convert, right? So right, right, right. it depends on what your KPIs are for each of these groups. But the thing is, I mean, it's human nature. Everyone's job is to keep their job first and then <laughs> do yeah. the, what's best for the company, right? And so- yeah, yeah. If you're too good at security at the front end, you can actually affect a lot of this downstream stuff that you wouldn't think about until it's you know too late. And so when we first started selling shape or offering shape, we learned this since so we armed our champion saying, this is how you have to address these groups. Um, you know, to understand what their KPIs are, understand what's going on. Um, but actually in banking, they've actually evolved a lot of the decision-making process for the larger banks at least. And they actually create these cross-functional teams that you know, are designed to make decisions on the benefit of the company, but actually have the perspective of each of these individual groups, right? And so you have like legal and compliance coming in and like marketing and sales or the business operator and then fraud and security, and mm-hmm. they're making decisions. And that's that's why you should do it. Um, it's really hard to go up that level. Otherwise you have to end up going to the C level where they're looking at the best for what's going on in the company. And that takes a while to make that decision. And that's, you know, that's, it's just part of understanding that security affects all parts of the business and understanding how it affects all parts of the business and understanding how you can kind of like do those trade-offs or understand like there are benefits, even though there's some negative side effects as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's absolutely fascinating. So like on one hand, you know, when you said, Hey, we put shape in front of this, you know, major retail or whatever, and they saved $50 million in like, you know, gift card fraud or whatever. And then the fraud department is like, wait a minute, that just put us out of a job. You know, you would think that organizationally, you know, someone would step in and be like, well, hey, fraud department, we still need all of you. We just saved $50 million over here. Maybe we could reallocate some things or whatever. But I think people, people tend to say, well, hey, that just put me out of a job. And then 
And then the other one, I man, I I, I kind of feel it with the with the whole like. Let's say you've got a lot of page views that are your, you know, key performance indicators, your KPIs. It's like, hey, man, this thing's got tons of page views and all that. And then you put shape in line and it's like we just lost 90 about 90 percent of our page views. Uh -huh. But to your point, the conversion rates actually may go up, you know. So at that point, it's like, hey, we need to reeducate people on what you're looking at in terms of good KPIs. Right. Yep. Definitely. That's I mean, all awesome. again. If you're in advertising, though, and you're your magazine, your views go down. That's a lot harder to justify, right? So again, uh, but then you can say, you know, one of the things we've seen is you can say these are real customers, right? So when you're selling mm -hmm. uh, ad space to these people, these are legitimate clicks versus the kind of like spamming automation, right? And we've seen things where competitors do fake clicks on ads as well to run the costs up for their competitors as well. So <laughs> that's crazy. It's, it's a battle. Like you see all kinds of like very creative ways to use automation to like make money or hurt your competitor or hurt your hurt your enemy whatever that is yeah. crazy man yeah you know who would have thought of that well obviously people did and like, hey, I, can, I can i can launch a bot or automated traffic against my competitor because they're having this ad spend and i just basically burn through all their ad spend yeah. you know because th that just kills their budget and it costs that you not it costs you very little to do the ad click i mean google is very good at click fraud in fact our CTO Schumann actually was head of click fraud at Google um, yeah. and they're really good at it. But like if you have other platforms where they don't care about, uh, you know, real clicks or fake clicks, you can actually, and we've seen this a lot. I'm no offense if anyone's in advertising or but like if you protest that half these ads are, or half these clicks are fake, that most of the time they'll just say, yes, we'll get rid of them for you. They won't even like look for evidence. It's wow. It's pretty rampant. Um, so yeah. That's, good. That's another good thing. All kinds of practical stuff, man. So, <laughs> so slow, slow cook, smoke, you know, on the brisket, right? Go to San Francisco. But yeah, if you, if you say, Hey, these are fake clicks then, or fake ads or fake, whatever, then, uh, you know, a lot of people just say, okay, fine. We'll get rid of them for you. Yeah. That's, it's, it's understood. That's really, it's, I mean, mostly fake ad clicks are very obvious, right? They're coming from like <laughs> a few IP addresses, but yeah. uh, what we've seen is, you know, it's really easy to switch IP address, right? You can use Tor, you can use proxies, VPN. Uh -huh. And so there's this weird kind of mentality where people block by IP address, but everyone understands it's easy to switch, yeah. right? And so don't block by IP addresses. You're gonna have a lot of false positives. You're gonna anger some customers. Uh, yep. Use other signals to do that. Because again, it's really easy to switch IP. That's the first thing they do is they switch yeah. IP addresses and then they start rate limiting. So if your rate limit's at 50 transactions per minute, they're at 49, right? Because it it's yeah. so easy to retool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, if you have good signals, it's hard to retool against, but again, mm -hmm. it's what those signals are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the attackers will, the attackers will automate the attack. Like you said, they'll retool and it's like, hey, I'm going to send a, you know, whatever. I'm going to send a slow Loris attack today or, or for 10 minutes. And then, you know, that's blocked. So then I'm going to go to a slow post. Tools I'm go, are amazing now. I mean, you know, yeah. The dark web tools are really amazing. So there's a great tool called browser automation studio. Do not run it on your, run it on a VM. Uh, <laughs> but if you look up browser automation yeah. studio, it yep, is yep. a great oh, did uh, we, bot testing. Hang tool. on. That may be me. Are you there? Where did I drop? Oh, hang on. I think that may, I don't know which one of us. Are you back there now? Okay, good to go. We're back. I apologize. I don't know which side that was on, but we're good to go now. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, browser Automation Studio is a great tool to understand yeah. how complex attacks can be. Yep. Um, they can mimic mouse with the keystrokes on a website, web application. Uh, they can do variations as well. Um, it's, it's a really scary tool. Um, I mean, really good too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good in the sense that whoever built it knows what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. But again, don't run it on your standard computer. Run it in a VM. <laughs> right, sure. Be safe. But uh, do a little virtual. Yeah, you can search for it. It's available. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to use it as well. Which is like, yeah. it's probably the most commonly used tools by college kids to, uh, yeah, make money. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> that is so. Uh, hey, which speaking of, I know. Let me let me check the time here really quick. We got about ten minutes. This, these times just go by so fast for me because it's fascinating. Okay, so speaking of college kids, there's another topic I wanted to talk about. You uh, you had talked about the way that some people attack into like these, um, you know, 
credit or not credit cards, but like uh, like, you know, point systems or, you know, like a like a sandwich store or a burrito store that has reward, you know, programs mm -hmm. and people go in and get free burritos and free sandwiches or free drinks. And mm -hmm. just the 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 problem, number one, the problem that is, but also on the other hand, where it's like there's kind of this spectrum of morality, if you will, that it's like, hey, if they're going to offer a free drink and I go get it and then I get another one with another email address, then how, you know, how does that work? But maybe talk to us a little bit about just that whole thing and, and what's okay. going on there. Yeah. So, I mean, having college kids is a really, as a, as a customer base is really good and really bad, right? So it's like the perfect storm, right? So they're usually pretty technical. They can watch YouTube videos. They got plenty of time and mm -hmm. not a lot of money. And so like, <laughs> they will just look at YouTube videos and how to like save a dollar or two. And we've seen this where if you offer any free benefit for just creating an account or on your birthday, right? They'll create lots of fake accounts and then just monetize every day, every day or whenever they can do it. Right. And there's actually a interesting, it's been fixed with a lot of these, a lot of our customers at least, but uh, the email standard, you can have as many periods as you want in the email, right? And the and username. And it'll still forward to the right email address. And so you can actually create 365 different email addresses that route to one email address that um, creates an account. So basically, you possibly can get, uh, you know, 365 free birthday things a, a year, which we've seen every. So like every single day, you go to your coffee shop and you're like, "Hey, it's my birthday again, right?" Yeah. And then the barista is like, "All right, you know." And it's, uh, it's it's free. It's not so. There's that that level which is like it's kind of it's 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 questionable. But if you're taking over an account and stealing loyalty points, that's a little different. Or at least like I mean, yeah. I, I don't know where you sit on this thing, but like you know, Bed Bath Beyond. I'll call that company out because they do it. They offer everyone knows that you create an account, you get a 20 percent free coupon, right? And right, right, right. If you want to buy something, email addresses are cheap and fungible, right? So you would just get an email address and do it type of thing, right? Or, I mean, you know, $25 credit for free ride, things like that. I know that in Asia, um, when American companies went to try to monetize things in, say, China, uh, mm -hmm. there was a lot of rampant buy activity <laughs> for the uh, you know, customer acquisition, right? So Silicon Valley talk, right? What's the cost of acquiring a customer, right? CAC. Mm -hmm. And so they'll offer all these startups will offer a lot of free stuff just to acquire customers to show that exponential growth. The thing uh, is, though, that you have, you know, bots are available. Bot tools are really easy. And so you can just like make gets lots of free stuff. Right. I mean, if you imagine the 10 back in the 80s, 10 free C 10 CDs for a dollar. Right. That's an account <laughs> creation type scheme. And if you can just monetize that, that's pretty lucrative. And it, oh, again, man. it's not a big thing to steal a dollar or two dollars or free guacamole, but you do it at scale with a million college kids, that gets pretty significant. And that's you know the problem that shape yeah. addresses is automation is not it's good or bad, right? You can use shoe bots to buy you know shoes or Xboxes, but like at scale it becomes a pretty significant problem. Oh no doubt about it. I mean it's yeah so it, it's kind of this crazy balance if you're the company you're like I want to offer you know a free sandwich or a free drink on your birthday but then when someone's like I'm gonna do it 365 times or, or, and, and that's, I mean, that's kind of that, you know, scale of morality, like, ah, maybe you've kind of stepped a little, you've, you've gone beyond the heart and soul of the, of the intent, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but then certainly when you start stealing other people's points, you know, like my, uh, my daughter's got the Starbucks, you know, points or whatever. Mm -hmm. And heaven forbid, if someone were to steal her points, man, I mean, that would be, that would be all out war at that point. Right. Yeah. And the so. common thing they do is they use it to buy a gift card or something they can sell. Right. Oh yeah. And gift cards are really, those are really fungible. You can sell them on raise.com for 99, 98% of the value. Right. In the old days you would steal something and then maybe sell it for 50% of the value on Craigslist or eBay or yep. whatever you could do. But yep. now like attackers are way more complex. And so the another thing we've seen is, People will create fake accounts on stores and you can return things, stolen things for gift card credit, right? Ah, and so right. the older the account is, the more more stuff you can return, it won't hit the risk engine. So like, even if you take over an account, there's no value in it. If it's older, you can return more stuff. Like versus $50 for one thing, or you can serve $500 for an older account. And so if professional criminals will actually steal truckloads of stuff, like whole truckloads, wow. just return at scale for these gift cards and sell them and monetize them. So there's like, it's really impressive how creative these, <laughs> these criminals are, <laughs> how they do that. 
Yeah. Some say necessity is the mother of invention. You know, I guess in this case, it's just like, hey, I'm I want my money and I'm going to do anything I can to, to steal but it. You think if they were that clever, they could get a job that pays like <laughs> the is a very lucrative like environment. Right. If I you know. come up with this scheme like. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's yeah. It's frustrating, but you know, I get it. People take have got to create. Yeah, exactly. Take the creativity, take the, you know, the motivation and turn it, you know, turn it into something positive. But, you know, but hey, that's the world we live in. And that's that's why you need you need some shape in your life to kind of cut down on all it's the bot stuff. A war of attrition, right? It's like, yeah, attack, block, retool, block, retool. It just and that ends. and that but that journey never ends. I mean, you know. I guess, you know, the, theoretically, the journey would end if the attackers stopped retooling and stopped attacking. But well, when is that going to happen? Well, they're a business. So the thing is, if you make their tax more expensive than what they get, then they'll go somewhere else. But it's like yep. for banks, they'll never go for like anything where it's just it, it's really even for like manual click farms. Right. So, for example, you can pay someone 10 bucks a day to just manually enter stuff in to get around capture and all that stuff. And so as long as they make ten dollars or more a day. Like if you're a 20% profitable business, that's a really good margin, yeah. right? And so like we see Shape has evolved to actually see manual click farms as well because they do things to make themselves more efficient and that causes yeah. them to look a little different than what real people would look like. And that's how we catch them. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I remember speaking of click farms, the, maybe we can have that discussion another day too, but we had Dan Woods on uh, not that long ago and we were talking about a lot of different stuff and with Shape and bots and all that. But he said he used to work at a Russian human click farm. Like he was one of the human clickers kind of like to get around some of the CAPTCHA stuff and all that. Oh, they have they have tests. So actually like you can do it online. You actually do certification tests of how fast and how accurately you can solve CAPTCHA. It's, <laughs> it's not like it's it's an industry, right? I mean, again, if you can make money, like it's people. Yeah. Make money. That's amazing. It's like, hey, you know, do you write like, do you call back to your parents, to your mother and say, hey, mom, congratulations, you know, got great news. I passed the entrance requirement, entrance requirements for the human click farm, you know, job. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm so proud of you, son, whatever. It's a so, certification. It's fine. Right. Do you do you add that to your resume? You LinkedIn know what profile I mean? at the back. <laughs> your LinkedIn profile. I love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, good to go, man. Well, Rob, I tell you what, it's like it's like three minutes till. So our time is kind Ooh, of, um, yeah. I, isn't this crazy? It goes by like that. Every time it goes by like that. So here's what I would say. I would love to like continue this conversation, maybe do this again soon, you know, and everyone can kind of chime in. I'd love to hear about everybody else's thoughts on, you know, um, just stealing reward points or how organizations look at security and just all that stuff. Or, you know, talk about human click farms and how captchas don't really work at all, right? So that would be or, awesome. Or how to make money by scalping Xboxes and PS5s. Oh my God, we didn't even get to talk about that. That's our next thing. Yeah, how do you, oh man. Or uh, my, my good buddy, Jason Rom, he was on there too. Uh, he, he's, you know, had a couple of comments here. He's talked about the Raspberry Pis and how it's like, hey, how do you get a hold of one of those? Or just, I feel like there's could be this whole black market, you know, oh, some yeah. of the you some can. of the tooling or the technology that's just hard to come by. So yeah, you, can, you can buy bots as well to actually get what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-configured again, run it in a VM. Don't run it all your. Don't uh, yeah, but yeah. they're available. Like if you just type in like shoe bot or like Raspberry Pi, like a store and bot for buying stuff and you'll find them and they're, yeah. they're pretty good. They'll get around, mo except for shape customers, of course, but yeah, like, of course, of uh, course, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of tools out there and you can make like, all it takes is one shoe. Like, you know, you buy a limited edition shoe, sell on eBay for a $300 profit. You're done. Right. Or a graphics done. card for like Bitcoin mining or whatever. Like there's exactly. a lot of stuff that is limited inventory that, you know, you, it's good to get in. The, like that's better than a stimulus check. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, hey, government, I don't need my six hundred dollars. I want, you know, I want I my... sold two two pairs of shoes on eBay. Done. Or I sold <laughs> an Xbox. It's like, Rob, that's why people do it. I mean, you know, not to be you know, not, not to be dismissive. It's, whatever, it's, that's why. Yeah. I think the laws are kind of vague on that as well. Like scalping is illegal. But yeah, what scale and like. Yeah. We, we can talk about tickets as well later on. Like we will. Yeah. About that too. <laughs> Here, here's here's one just super quick and then we'll and then we'll wrap this one up today. But yeah, leave yeah. stealing tickets when they go live. And it's like, hey, how did something sell out in eight seconds? And it's like, oh, well, because my bot farm just bought them all, man. 
So you, um, you may yeah. have challenges as well, right? Because you know, if, if, once they they sell them, usually these ticket companies have resell opportunities, right? So they getting multiple. They're, they get twenty percent of the original sale or whatever, and they get maybe twenty yeah. percent of the next sale as well. So like, are they motivated or not? I don't know. Okay. So right. yeah, there's there's some little it's nuance kind of purpose, <laughs> cross purposes there. Like then this is like understanding the KPIs and their motivations of each group within an organization. It's it, circle back to that industry. Like, is it worth it for them? Is it valuable for them? Or, or how are they are they hurt by bots or are they actually helped by bots? Right. Yeah. So that's, yeah. That's a uh, what a fascinating discussion. All right. Hey, these are all topics. We got to come back. We got to keep this conversation going, man. Well, Rob, this has been amazing. Tons of fun. And I just appreciate your willingness to come on and, uh, and you know, tell us all about briskets and bots and all the stuff, man. Of course. So it's been fun. Thanks for thanks for everything you do. And uh, and man, let's let's do this again sometime. All right. Awesome, man. Hey, have a great one. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, man. Bye bye. All right. Well, I tell you what, man, Rob Roach, what a pleasure to talk to that guy. That is amazing. Hey, I wanted to give one quick shout out. Momlish or Mamlish, 110 a.m. in India. I know it's uh, it's it's probably more like one, you know, 130 a.m. in India. So thanks for being here, man. That's amazing. Um, appreciate you staying up late. And uh, and just a quick uh, br quick brisket thing, Andrew. We need a we need a brisket day at F five, which I completely agree, of course. And then Leslie gave a little shout out. Apparently, there's a national day for everything. I guess National Brisket Day is coming up May twenty eighth. Not that I need you know May twenty eighth to get here to to enjoy some brisket, but yeah, that's that's good stuff. Uh, and then Jason, I wanted to wanted to throw your little comment out there. I know we're kind of running low on time, but uh, someone mentioned that captures where you're stealing selecting stoplights is actually training someone's artificial intelligence. So yeah, you selecting the CAPTCHA is training someone else's you know, machine learning or AI engine. It's crazy to think about that. And then Sarah Body, the answer is yes, it is okay to make this stuff fun. And man, that's what we love to do. So I'm, I, I appreciate that uh, comment. I'm glad you had some fun today. So hey, if you like this thing, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get all the notifications and um, Come back and see us, man. Every Thursday at 1230 Pacific, uh, we're going to have these conversations. We do Dev Central uh, Connects. Jason's got the You Want Answer show. We got this security sidebar. And uh, and it's uh, it's just a great time. So I just want to say thanks to everyone in the Dev Central community. You guys are the best. Keep doing all the great stuff. And we will see you out there in the community.